Hello everybody, this is Dream Uma back to kick off round 3 for Group B. Yes, this is again, like Group A, is probably going to be a pivotal round for Group B here. As we start off with a big clash between Toka Nightmare and Lousp. Pilk going up against Jack McSevenar. And then Tabletop in Heady taking on bottom of the table, Dino Hunter. Ooh, without further ado, let's get on with our first matchup, which I, I am really looking forward to this one. I don't know who's going to win. This is going to be a tight game between Toka Nightmare and Lausp. All righty then. In the red corner for Toka, we got our Alpha Radosaurus. Both of our combatants looking to bounce back from second round defeats. But, well, of course, only one of them can bounce back. Honestly, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this ended in a draw. I really wouldn't. Such an even contest this could be. In the blue corner, for our two-time champ Louse, we got an Anti-Ceratops. Serial winner Louse here, looking to get back to winning ways after suffering a setback against Pilk. Who actually, in fairness, did pretty well. Right the over, let's get the car random them and generate that. Be good to us. Ooh, a crit from the Raj. Just the start Toka wants. Tie bombs coming in here, giving Louse the taste of his own medicine. Ooh, but Anki Ceratops getting a crit back there. And a tie bomb of his own. Um, I would probably say ties still favour the Anki Ceratops. Ooh, what have we got here? It's an electric charge. Yeah, I say ties favour the anti ceratops because it is charge type, but the, the Alpha Raj does have heat eruption, but well this is Toka we're talking about, so what's the chances heat eruption can activate? Ooh, Lars getting another hit. Anki Ceratops looking good so far. More balanced stats than the Raj, and I think that's helped Laus, as has the electric charge. Oh, well, Rajasaurus going down. Louse racing into a 1-0 lead against Toka Nightmare. Is it happening again for Toka? Well, I wouldn't say that. Not, not so far. But okay. As for Toka's second dino, we have a Super Lillian Stern. We've seen how effective this little green pest can be. And Toka's going to need it to be effective again against Louse if he wants to get back in this match. Actually, now that I'm look, now they're looking at it, Louth's Alpha Acro will have the type advantage over this thing, so maybe Louth does have the upper hand in this matchup. Of course, then, Brontekins comes in with the type advantage over the Alpha Acro, and then Ferry comes in, so, you know, yeah, I'd still say Louth has the upper hand based on that matchup. Toka finally getting a hit back there. Needed it. Earth once. Okay, I better double check the Awaken mode just to be sure. I think it's three times. It is three times? Yes, it is. It's three times from as is, as it is the case for most people. Oh, it's a crit! And with the buffed up Anticeratops. Well, oh, wow, look at that. Wow, electric charge is quite strong. Um. Well, I certainly didn't expect this. Alrighty then, as for Toka's third dino, we got a Brontokins. Well, it's gonna need the Spectral Armor here if he wants to get back in this match. Well, it, and he has a tight disadvantage as well, so he's gotta get past Anki Ceratops first. A buffed up Anki Ceratops, I should say, thanks to the electric charge. Could Laus win free now? Well, wouldn't put it past him, would you? Oh, big hit coming from Blontekins. Toga Nightmare finally striking back. Oh, oh, here comes a crit. Oh, here comes big damage to the Blontekins. Oh, look at that. Over half the health gone. Oh, big hit from Blontekins, though. Anki Ceratops is... Oh my god, it's gonna get Katanga another hit like that. Oh, Toka, Toka, Toka. 
Okay, it's a tie, but look, look at this. Louth, yeah, Louth is going to win. But it's not going to be a 3 0 win. Hydro Cutler coming in here. Louth finally loot taking a hit. Anki Ceratops finally going down. But yeah, let's be honest. I will, although, this Alpha Acro does have the type disadvantage. But let's be honest, I, I think because Brontekins' health is so low. Even with a tight disadvantage, I think one hit's going to kill it. And if it's Rock, it'll definitely kill it. And it's got Dino Stuffer as well, so... Yeah, I think... I think Laos is going to win this match. But we'll see if Toka can show some defiance. Hi. Ooh, we might see Spectral Armor. We are! Hang on, I need to enter the chords. Well, if, if Toka can get this hit off, all of a sudden... Oh, he gets the hit! Well, well, well! Toka Nightmare showing some defiance, getting right back in this match! Well, yeah, Alpha Acro is dead. It's not going to survive this. Yeah, no surprise there. Alpha Acro gone! Well, as for Light's third Dino, which I didn't expect to see, we have the Therizinosaurus. Wait. This is Super Therial. I think I may have made a mistake. I think I entered the code for Super Fairy instead of the normal one. Oh dear. Oh! Oh no, I didn't. Good. <laughs> Look at this! Talk a nightmare! Oh, it's a tie! Oh, the <laughs> Brontekin's hanging on by a thread! Oh no! <laughs> oh my goodness! What a match! Like, I would have been gutted if that was the wrong fairy, but it isn't, thankfully. Oh my goodness! Toka nightmare! How did Toka get that close to winning? One hit from the Brontekins would have won it. Toka nightmare! Like, honestly. You deserve that losing bonus point just for that comeback. I know the comeback wasn't completed. Laos pulled away at the end, but oh, Laos was getting nervous here. I can tell. But we definitely saw the power of an armored dinosaur. I've just realized I've done it again. No, 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 it's right, right, yeah. Because <laughs> when the armored dinosaur gets off the ultimate move, next round is a tie unless... That armored dinosaur user's health is is down to their last dino. And Toka was down to their last dino. So, yeah. Okay, I, I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> Phew. Ugh, don't even know my own rules. Right. Well, I'm sure we all need to cool down after that match. But I got two more matches for you to tuck into. And next up, we are going to see... Pilk going up against Jack McSevenar. Alrighty then. In the red corner for Pilk. We've got a Lexovasaurus. This Lexovasaurus, well, we all know what it is capable of, especially when it gets off that Quake Saber. Powerhouse to boot. Not going to be easy for Jack McSevenar, but for Jack McSevenar in the blue corner, we have a Ceratosaurus, a Super Ceratosaurus. It might need the Awaken Mode here to get past this Powerhouse Lexovasaurus. Well, we'll just have to see, won't we? Bam, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know who's going to win this match. This could be a tight game. Both of our combatants got... Well, both of our combatants got their first wins of the tournament last time out. Another win will set them up nicely to qualify from the group. But the Lexovasaurus gets the first hit. 
Although, it's not a crit, so it won't do that much damage. Alright, that's one. The awaken mode is on two, by the way. Oh, another tie. Ooh, the Ceratosaur is getting a hit. And next round will be a wake wake tie. Ooh, Crystal Crush again triggered. That will definitely help. Help there. Ooh, we've got a Jet Shuriken coming in. Extra damage being dealt to the Lexovasaurus. Ooh, this is interesting because the Awaken Mode will happen. A t well, it won't be a tie because Crystal Crusher. Ooh. Oh, it does get the hit. The Ceratosaurus does get off the Tornado Toss. And that will be curtains for Lexovasaurus. Yep, Let's Oversaurus is dead. Kind of wasted the Awaken mode, but you know, never mind. Still has the lead. Right, as for Pilk second, I know we got you strep the Spondylus. You strep the Spondylus, you're going to have to pull its weight here to get, to get Pilk back in this match. Jack McSevenar could pull away here if he gets off enough hits. So yes, yeah, important for this you strep the Spondylus to get some hits on the board to take out this Serato quick before it does too much damage to the Uru Strep the Spondylus. Oh, well, there it is. There's the hit. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it Surely it can. All right, then. As for Jack in the blue core... Well, uh, as for Jack McSevenar's second, I know we got an Ampelosaurus. We saw quite a glimpses of this guy. And, well, we definitely saw how effective it could be, as it pretty much won it for him last time against Dino Hunter. Sa! What the, the, whatever Max just said. Ooh, that's a two. Oh, that's another tie. But quite a lot of payments this match. Oh, another tie. You strip the spondylus getting off a hit. It's the dino swing. Choo! Although not much damage dealt, the aqua vortex has been triggered. Ooh, this will be interesting now. Because you've got the cyclone and the aqua vortex. So will which one will cancel the other one out? Or will they just cancel each other out? Oh, well, we're not going to find out, sadly, because you strapped the spot the list, gets the hit. Pilk taking the lead in this match. Ooh, but the Ampelosaurus is not done yet. Getting off a hit. Wow, this has been a back and forth match so far. Good to see, good to see. Dino Illusion getting triggered, though. That could help Pilk turn the screw. Yeah, he's dead. Ampelosaurus is gone. Pilk having a 2-1 lead. Okay, now this is interesting because we have Super Therizinosaurus here and the Awaken Mode will be right away. So obviously the worst case scenario would be for the Awaken Mode to happen with the Dino Illusion in effect. Because you won't get a hit then and it's wasted. So gotta get this Dino Illusion gone first. Otherwise, I think Pilk is going to win this match. So, oh wow, the fairy's gonna need three hits to kill this you strep this ponderless. Oh I didn't get it! Oh the dino illusion is gonna be in effect. And uh, yeah, that's it. That pretty much gives Pilk the win for me. Like the awaken mode is wasted because it's not he's not gonna get a hit. It doesn't matter if it's a tie. But it doesn't get a hit anyway, yeah. Oh, bad timing there. Bad, bad timing. Awaken mode gone. And that was pretty much Jack's last chance to get back in this match. Tight. You still got the Dino Illusion to get rid of. Yeah, there it is. Wow. <laughs> oh, it did. Oh, it survived. Give it its props. The fairy did survive that hit. But yeah, it's not going to survive another hit. 
And there it is. Oh, that kind of sucks for Jack McSev. Now, I'm eat a back and forth match, but Pilk pulling away with the strip to Spondylus and getting a bonus point win to back up his impressive win last round over Lousp. As for Jack McSev and I, could be a fight for third for them. Pilk looking up, looking up at the top of the table. Looking pretty good there after a shaky start in the first round. Pilk looking pretty solid. Alright, the end. On to our final match of this session, and it's quite a big one, between Heady takes on Dino Under. Alrighty then, in the red corner for Heady the Eddy, we got the T-Rex. And one thing I have noticed in this tournament is that people that seem to use T-Rex, or, well, or Terry, seem to do really well in the matches so far. So, will it help Heady win this matchup? We'll just have to see, won't we? In the blue corner for Dino Hunter, we got the Alpha Rajasaurus. Don't think we've seen this guy's full potential yet. In fact, I, you know, it's kind of been a bit underwhelming so far from Dino Hunter, but as I said, it's, well, put it this way, it's win or bust. You know, you can't, you can't, anything less than pretty much a bonus point when he's done. Even, even if he wins this match. Like, he could still, still still be a mountain, an Everest to climb to get out of this group. Which I don't think is going to happen now, to be honest. Who's it time? Ooh, the Rajasaurus getting the first hit. Does Dino Hunter have the upper hand in this alpha arena? Well, so far I'd say yes. Who's a tie? This is a good start from Dino Hunter though. Needs to kill this T-Rex quick before it gets off too many hits. Ooh, it's a tie. Heady yet to get going so far. Wonder how much that match against Toto in the second round has taken out of him. Well, it seems to have taken a lot out of him so far. He just cannot get a hit. Oh, look at that. The T-Rex going down. Well, tick one for Dino Hunter there. Got rid of the T-Rex early on and has the lead. But do not count Heady out yet because his second Dino is a Spino. And it does have the type advantage over the ranch. So, I doubt Dino Hunter will be extending that lead. But Heady has yet to get a hit in this match. And he really needs to get some hits on the board. Otherwise... Dino Hunter could be right back in this group stage. Oh, finally a hit from Heady. And it's a big one. Look at that. Decent damage dealt there. Ooh, it's a tie. Yep, Dino Hunter's first Dino is done. The Alpha Rajasaurus so did its job in taking out the T-Rex. And we are pretty much level pecking. Right, yo, then. As for Dino and the second Dino, we got a Sorolophus. Actually, I'd say so far, Dino Hunter's got off more hits than Heady has. But Heady seems to be doing more damage with his hits. I don't know, actually. Maybe they're level. But yes, it could be a crucial matchup this could be now. This is where, well, Dino Hunter did well in the last matchup, and then this is the bit where it really fell away. Can't let that happen again. Oh, is it happening again? Oh, it's going wrong! Heady turning the screw after a slow start. Oh, is it going wrong for Dino Hunter again? I think it's going to. Oh, this is... Well, this is basically what happened in the second match. He was doing well, and then all of a sudden, he just fell off a cliff. Or... Or maybe not. The one thing he didn't get last time was a crit. And this is going to do a crap ton of damage. Now I would say Heady's got off more hits than Dino Hunter. But look at that Dino Hunter pulling it back there with a crucial big foot assault. Oh, he got another one! Dino Hunter retaking the lead. Well, Heady had a little bit of a spurt, but Dino Hunter is coming back into it to retake the lead. 
been back and forth this match so far. But can Dino Hunter get this done to get his first win of the tournament? Well, it'll be easier for him because Heggy's third Dino is the Ankylosaurus, which will have the tight disadvantage against our Sorolophus. So, you'd have to say a golden opportunity here for Dino Hunter to get a bonus point win. And that will remove, that will take him to zero points. But it will give him a very slight fighting chance of getting out of group B. Well, it's a hit, but again, look how little damage. Yeah, look at that. Little damage. Very little damage. Heady needed this crit, and he's got it. However, this rock roller will kill the Sorolophus, so Dino Hunter will get denied that possible bonus point win. Oh, I, I feel like that's a chance miss there, even though the Sorolophus was on really low health. I feel like that was a chance miss. Alright, as for Dino Hunter's third and final Dino, we got an Isosaurus. Dun, dun, dun. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, I don't know now. If he gets two bonus point wins in the last two matches, which I think are against Laos and Toka, by the way, so I don't see that happening. That would put him, if he wins this matchup now, that would put him to 7. 4, 8, 11, minus 4, so we go down to 7. I think 7 points might just be enough as one of the best 4th place teams, but yeah, gotta get this match won first. And a crit from the Isosaurus is a good way to go. Elemental power as well. Dino Hunter looking good for once. Oh, it's a big hit! Well, Dino Hunter is finally going to get himself points in this tournament. The worst that can happen now is a losing bonus point, but of course, when you're in the situation Dino Hunter's in, losing bonus points aren't good enough. Ooh, a crit from the Ankylosaurus. Oh, hey, oh my god, look at that damage. Hmm. I'll have to double check that. Hedy might have guaranteed himself a losing bonus point. Oh, but he wants more! He wants to win! Okay, now that's guaranteed it. Look at this. This is a really tight game, and it all comes down to this. Oh, it's destruction! Well. Oh, head in hands moment for Dino Hunter. The snap, smash and grab by Heady to get another win on the board and to secure, well, 90% secure his place in the last 32. And in the same time, pretty much end Dino Hunter's hopes of getting out of Group B. Well, Heady has been one of the surprise packages of this tournament and snatching a win again. But wow. You could, you could say, though, with Heady, you know, those last two matches could have completely gone against him. So, he has had the rub of the green so far, I will I will say that. But, because Dino Hunter was on top for most of that match, and I feel like he deserved the win more. But, gotta give Heady the props here for hanging on in there. Wasn't flattering, but they got the job done. And I'd say it's job done for Heady in terms of getting out the group. At this point, the worst he'll get is fourth, and he'll be he'll go through as one of the best fourth place teams anyway with the points he's got. But anyway, enough about that. We can look at the table and end the session. Look how tight Group B is. Look at that heady somehow on top with three wins out of three and ten points. Then we got Pilk in second place with two wins on the board. That bonus point win against Jack Mc Seven are proving crucial there in getting second place. Louse been third, getting back to winning ways on six points. And then we have, well, we also have Toker on six points, but Louse is above them because Louse has more wins. And then we'll have Jack McSevenar in fifth on four points. And then poor old Dino Hunter, at least he got off the mark in this tournament with the losing bonus point on minus three. And yeah, two matches to play for Dino Hunter. And yeah, I, th I think he's done. I'm sorry, I just, I think he's done. But, is a moral to this story, 
and that is to not cheat or break rules in my tournament, because it will not end well for you. I mean, te the most points he can get is five. He could get two 3-0 wins. So I would put him up to seven. And that would basically take him on on level packing with Pilk. And then, of course, I suspect these lot will get more points. So yeah, I think Dino Hunter's done. Like, it's not, like, guaranteed, but it's about... I think he's about 90% out. I just don't see him getting through, unfortunately. I think if, if if it weren't for the points deduction, he would he would still have a fighting chance, but no. I, I think he's done. But, yes, Heady... Pretty, again, 90% through, I'd say. Like, 10 points is enough. It's going to be enough. Look how tight it is between these lo this lot. Round 4 could be a... Def well, will be a defining round for Group B. Ooh, we will see Pilk going up against Heady. A clash at the top. Will Heady make it 4 wins out of 4? Or can Pilk end his winning streak? Then we will have Dino Hunter taking on Token Nightmare. Good chance for Token Nightmare there to close the gap on the top. And then Jack McSevenar, a tough encounter against Larisp. So, yeah, that is Group B, ladies and gentlemen. So, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future tournament videos in the coming days and weeks. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer signing out.